It's all connected. 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 Yeah, baby, it's all connected. You can be sure of that. Howdy, folks, and welcome to the It's All Connected program here on RLM Radio, our RealLibertyMedia.com, RLMRadio.xyz. It's Monday, August 3rd, 2020. August 3rd? You got Echo? What are you, are you, see, people mess with me all the time. I can't tell whether they're being serious or not. Uh, oh, oh! you mean in the opener. <laughs> now I get it. All right. August 3rd. You know what that means? It's Grammy's birthday. So, uh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Grammy. And all that other stuff. <laughs> all right. So, hey, happy birthday, Grams. Hope you're having a great day out there uh, on your X times 29th birthday. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, today's show, today's show, it's episode six, by the way. And today's show I titled, What Can I Say That Hasn't Been Said? What can I say that hasn't been said? I, I don't think there's much. I, I mean, everything's been said probably a thousand times. And uh, I'm going to say other stuff. I, I, don't, I didn't go with one of my, my previously scheduled thought about topics and uh, go through and do all the research. I was already considering uh, because this week, if I would have followed my pattern, uh, would, would have been um, the Gulf of Tonkin. But I decided, you know, the Gulf of Tonkin is so narrow, so short, um, uh, that uh, uh, it, it just, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't want to do it. And my next thing was the gold standard. And I've talked about it ad nauseum over the years, about the ending of the gold standard. See, Grammy, she's probably not tuned in. She doesn't know I just sang her happy birthday. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so uh, you know, I, I'm not. I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I got to do something. I got. I got. I got. I got to do something different with this program. I, I don't know what it is yet, or or how to do it, or what I, what I want to do. Um, I, all I know is that I haven't been having fun. I haven't been having fun with the It's All Connected program. Um, so I, I I need to find. I I, I want to have fun. See, Freaker's Ball, I love it. I have a great time on that show. Sunday Blues, it's just blues. I get on there and I play blues. It's it's fun. It's great. Um, other shows that I've done, I've had pretty good time with. Uh, this one, this one, I, I don't know. Um, I, I just, it hasn't clicked in. It hasn't made me feel anything yet. Uh, so, um, I, and I was thinking about uh, go ahead and, and, and just canceling the program. And just get out of it. But a good friend, a very, very good friend of mine, uh, has suggested to me that I, I don't do that. That I, that I stick around, you know, and, and do the show. But maybe, maybe, maybe take a couple weeks off or something and, and figure it out, figure out what I want to do. Although when I'm not doing it, I'm not really thinking about it. So, um, yeah, yeah, Grammy, you gotta feel the vibes, the vibes. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, but but uh, I, I, there's stuff that you know I, I guess I, I I feel good about, interested talking about. Um, anyway, one show that I thought about doing uh, quite some time ago, uh, well, a few years back now, um, well, was was to basically just do a, a like a Twitter roll, you know, go through my Twitter as it comes up and 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 just uh, tear apart whatever somebody's talking about on there or. If I agree with it, agree with it. Yeah, you know, that, and that's that's kind of fun because that's always fresh and new. Um, and, and I have, you know, a bunch of stories lined up in my in my reading list, um, a, a ton of stuff in there, and I, and I can go through and talk about one of those um, or some of those, not one of those. One of those, that would be horrible. <laughs> but, but, but um, 
Yeah, you know, I I I, I do enjoy coming on here and doing. Uh, yeah, see, see, Meister Brow, um, you, you're you're talking uh, basically the kind of the same things, but uh, pretty much everything, everything that I that I talk, I don't want for well, I don't want f too many freaks out there. Um, the RC, the RC. Oh, the rocket rocket chair. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you be throwing acronyms at me like I know what they mean. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, well, let, let's uh, let's see what I can see here on the Twitter and see what happens here. Uh, some guy asks a question here. This is my top Twitter thing. Which is worse, murder or rape? Uh, I'm gonna have to go with murder on that one. Yeah. I mean, rape's bad, don't get me wrong, but, uh, murder? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, there's a video, hey, Vinny on, on, uh, Vinny underscore RLM underscore radio on the Twitter. Thanks, Vinny. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I get a lot of, I get so much, uh, stuff. Uh, we, I, a lot of the people are people I already know, um. Yeah, yeah, like uh, Jabberwocky, that's uh, JJ's, and he's talking, what is this tweet he's got here? I saw four faces, one mad, a brother from the gutter, they looked up at me and down a bit, and turned to each other, I say, I don't, see, what the hell are you talking about, JJ? Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I don't know. Oh man, uh, yeah. So uh, uh, there. Oh, there's my tweet. Hey, it's all connected. Um, anyway, uh, what? <laughs> it's, it's kind of distracting doing it that way without stuff already lined up. Um, but I'm seeing an, an article here from uh, KTVU that says Burger King employee killed after customer complains about long drive through line. We'll take a look at that in a second. But uh, the, this guy that tweeted it out asks, or says, well, he says and he asks at the same time, they are stealing Popeye's ad campaign? <laughs> yeah, yeah, murder, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, rape, rape's terrible. It's horrible, but uh, yeah, murder. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go with murder being worse than rape. Sorry, those that of you that it might have been through such a thing. All right, so Burger King employee was killed after a customer complains about a long drive-through line uh, in Orange County, Florida. Imagine that. Uh, a, a young man, <laughs> Florida. Anyway, a young man is dead after a shooting at a Burger King in Florida. Deputy said. Orange County Sheriff's Office said that deputies responded to the fast food restaurant uh, on Sunday night in reference to a shooting. They said upon arrival, they found 22-year-old Desmond Armand Joshua in the parking lot with a gunshot wound. He was transported to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. 37-year-old Kelvis Rodriguez Torme has re reportedly been arrested on charges of first-degree murder with a firearm destruction of evidence, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Uh, the arrest affidavit from the Orange County Sheriff said the victim was working in the drive through line at the Burger King. Prior to the shooting, the line was particularly long uh, when one customer became irate and threatened to bring her man to the restaurant. Oh, okay. So the guy refunded the woman's order, told her to get the hell out of there, but she came back to the restaurant in a different vehicle, which was being driven by her man. Uh, the person demanded demanded a fight with Joshua and put him in a headlock and then began to choke him. The fight was broken up by the man, uh, uh, but, but the man then armed himself shortly after gunfire was heard and Joshua fell to the ground in the parking lot. Now this is over a long line at a drive-through fast food place. 
somebody gets killed. <laughs> I don't, uh, this is the world. This is what people do. So, uh, yeah, that's worse than rape. Right. <laughs> it's insane. That's what it is. These are the people that are out there. They're insane. Uh, okay. Well, uh, let me let me see what I got stored up in my read, reading list here for y'all. Oh yeah, I came across this today, and I, and I found this quite interesting. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and share this with you. Um, it's on the New York Post, and it, I, it just came out today. This article. Yeah, killing for a poison burger, and and, and it wasn't like just kind of a unplanned thing the guy was a uh, guy or the woman was really pissed off and did just hauled off and shot him no she drove back to her house after she got a refund get got her man brought him back to the place and he agreed to commit at least uh, a felony felony violence against the guy of uh you know beating him up or whatever and then went ahead and shot him because his woman decided, hey, you got to go defend my honor down there at the Burger King. <laughs> I was like, what <laughs> the hell is that? Uh, I shouldn't laugh. I mean, it's not funny, but it's funny all the same. Um, okay, I came across this article on the uh, New York Post here today. Uh, it's a parasite is turning cicadas into mind-controlled sex zombies. Mind-controlled sex zombies. Which my immediate question was, hey, maybe that's happened to me. <laughs> anyway, whether or not you find their shrill buzzing to be annoying or a pleasant reminder that summer is officially here, cicadas are a seasonal visitor that many people are familiar with. What you might not know, however, is that a bizarre, mind-controlling fungus is turning some of the insects into what can only be described as sex zombies. In a new paper published in PLOS Pathogens, which uh, I don't know what PLOS stands for, a research, uh, researchers describe that discovery of a fungal parasite that not only takes control of the body and mind of a cicada, but actually actively uses its power to lure other cicadas in with the promise of mating. So other horny cicadas see this other cicada over there doing the dance, <laughs> they come, oh, baby, let's get it on. Uh, the actions of the fungus are, 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 are like something straight out of a freaky sci-fi movie. While a male cicada becomes infected with the parasite, uh, the, the fungus begins to consume its innards. Over the course of roughly a week, the insect's abdomen great, gradually breaks down. During this time, the insect continues to travel, spreading the deadly fungal spores to others of its kind. The fungus replace, replaces parts of the abdomen with its own growths. As disturbing as that sounds, there's more. The fungus also prompts the cicadas to perform movements with its wings that mimic the signal used by female cicadas. So it turns them into transgender cicadas, I guess? Is, is that what you're trying to tell me here? Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so, uh, other male cicadas are tricked by the display, and when they come upon the infected male, they too are infected by the fungus, and the process begins again. The mechanism by which massospora induces female-associated behaviors in affected male cicadas is unknown. Uh, the, the the researchers write, males with conidia producing infections, I don't know how you say that word, C-O-N-I-D-I-A, conidia producing infections, 
which are spread by close contact among abundant individuals, exhibit sexual behaviors directed at both sexes by additionally wing flicking in response to calls to, uh, by other males. All right, let me, let, me, let, 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 let me just stop that article right there. But let me, let me ask, okay, funguses and cicadas have been around for a long time, a very long time. How is it just now that the, this is becoming a thing, or was it always a thing, and we just didn't know about it? And um, what I, the, the danger, the, the danger I find here in this is scientists now know about this fungus that causes this activity. Um, and if you're familiar with scientists and the actions that scientists like to do, uh, they, they probably want to try and replicate that in humans, get humans to do that, uh, that, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, not not good scientists, but the kind of scientists that are out there now. The kind of scientists that will tell you the science is settled on the global warming bullshit. Yeah, those those kind of scientists. They're the ones that are looking to eliminate the mass majority of humans because you know you're all dirty, useless eaters, and and they 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 want no part of you. They they want nothing. They they want well, they want you all to go away. <sighs> oh man! So so uh, I I don't know if this is really a bizarre story. Um, I, I I would kind of expect this um, to to be the kind of thing that happens, but here it is. Yeah, sex crazy goddess, and uh, uh, here's some of that fungus for. Uh, for to spread around people in, in your area, they can all become sex crazed um, attractors of whichever sex. I mean, there's like what 47 of them right now, right? <laughs> 47 genders. All right. <laughs> so over here on Natural Blaze, on uh, a couple of days ago, uh, th this was posted. Harvard, Harvard recommends deceiving consumers by not labeling fake meat, which, uh, did, uh, are these people totally ethicless? Ethicless, is that a word? Without ethics? All right. Harvard has petitioned the USDA to allow, allow sales of lab-grown fake meat as chicken or beef and claims forcing them to tell the truth Forcing them to tell the truth would violate their free speech. <laughs> Force, forcing them to advertise honestly, uh, or not even advertise, just label honestly, uh, the, the product that they're selling would violate their free speech. <laughs> Oh, man. Hang on one second. All right. I had a Corona cough there. Um, so, uh, Christian, I think that's a person's name, not a not his religious affiliation. Christian breaks down the stunning deception, uh, the latest salvo in the war on real food, and the agenda for a total transhumanist takeover of our food supply. Oh, it goes much farther than that. Oh, there's, there's nothing more to the article. You just have to watch his video, I guess, which uh, I'm not going to do, at least not right now. Um, I, I only read the headline on that when I put it into my into my, uh, my deal here. Oh, and Van Meter, Donna, Miss Donna, the lovely Donna, lovely and talented, uh, says she's now remembering that one X-Files. Well, I, I do remember X-Files with cicadas, but uh, more than that, I remember the ones with bees towards the last season or in the last season, uh, where the bees were, were uh, grown and planted uh, with a, a virus that would go out and, and um, 
infect people and turn them into human alien hybrids. Oh, by the way, <laughs> by the way, I've been thinking, and, and I was going to mention this Friday night on Freakers, and I forgot, and I was going to mention it yesterday before before the blues, and, and, and I forgot, but, but here it is. Something's coming. Something's coming. Uh, I, I, and I, I'm sure you all realize that something's coming, but I'm thinking, speaking of the X-Files, it is time for them to roll out the alien invasion. I'm pretty sure that the alien invasion will be rolled out in short order. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, they've, they've tried everything to get people to freak out and, and get scared about all the stuff that they're doing. And it's pissed a lot of people off, and it's scared some. And we, we, we see... We see People, you know, scared, uh, being shown all over the, you know, the clap, the, the corporate lame mass propaganda. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, uh, mainstream media. Uh, but, but, but that's the ones they show on on the freaking news shows. That's that's not the real thing going on out there. And I, I guarantee you, you want you go out into your community, you may see a bunch of people wearing their masks or whatever. But but they're not happy about it. They're they're not scared of a virus. They're scared of government doing something bad to them for not following the edicts handed down by by some freaking tyrant in the capital city of whatever state you're living in. That's what they're scared of. They're not scared of this freaking virus. <laughs> I say with the sarcasm in my voice. Um, You know, I, I, these guys, and they're trying so hard to get people to, to be freaked out and stay freaked out and think that the only way to to not have it affect them is to follow the words of the frauds, the obvious frauds, people like Fraudchi, uh, Fauci and, and that Bricks woman, um, Burks, I guess is her name, but I call her Bricks because she's obviously been hit in the head with several bricks. Um and they're all liars. And then the WHO, the World Health Organization, uh, they'll, they'll come out and tell you one thing one day and then a different thing the next. They came out a couple months ago. I don't know how many of you remember it, but they came out, and you could look it up on the interwebs using DuckDuckGo, uh, but but uh, look, at, look it up, uh, that the fact that the WHO came out and said that non-symptomatic asymptomatic uh, infections do not occur. If you don't have any signs of the virus, any of the official indicators, which, by the way, are hugely wide and varied and apply to all kinds of other stuff besides what they're saying uh, belongs to corona, but if you don't have it, you cannot pass it on, whether you have it or not. Whether it's in you or not, you're not passing it on if you don't have it. That group, the WHO, came out and said exactly those words. And immediately the WHO was attacked for being uh, a front for China as, as soon as they said that. And then that, that all went away. WHO never mentioned another, another word about it. I, I mean, you know, it, it's like with this hydrochloroquine stuff, you know, um, uh, the, the fraud she guy, and he was a big proponent of, of the hydrochloroquine for years, many years, subscribing it, telling it success stories. And suddenly when this new thing comes along, which is really not a new thing, it's, it's a variant of the SARS, which people have been cured. Many, many people were cured of the SARS with the hydrochloroquine. And this is a variant of that. So... <laughs> Uh, uh, anyway, anyway. Well, 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 well. <laughs> so so what the yeah it's not working you guys your 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 lies are not working you're really pissing people off so is what's going on you're really really pissing people off uh, you're forcing them out of out of their jobs out of their homes uh, a, a lot of relationships have ended over this there's been far more suicides going on, then there have been people dying of the Rona, yeah, the rice of Rona stuff, so, 
uh, you know. Uh, anyway, there's a lot of stuff that's uh, out there being talked about that I, I just don't, I, I couldn't give half a crap about. And, and I saw a lot of chat about it there in in the RLM chat here today. People talking about this Ellen woman. I, I don't know what she's up to or what she's done or why she's supposedly in trouble over whatever. And I don't care. <laughs> Absurdity, not absurdity, but yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh man! All right, let's see this meme here. There's a there's a meme. It's SpongeBob holding a clock, I guess. And the the the, the sponge is the government, and the clock is the Epstein Epstein didn't kill himself meme. And there's a guy below that says me, and he's got a whole big shelf full of clocks. <laughs> I know, Grams, who cares about the spelling? What kind of stuff is that? By the way, in case you were unaware, and I don't have the, a link to this story as far as I know, but in case you're unaware, and, and maybe I talked about it, or we talked about it on Friday night's Freaker's Ball, I'm not sure, but apparently now, that uh, proper grammar, proper grammar is now racist. Yeah, um, it was one of those Ivy League schools that said so. Yeah, if if you if you speak correctly, if you enunciate and 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 say words as they're supposed to be used, then you're a racist. Yes, you're a racist. So no more, and I don't know how they're, they're going to get people through their English courses out there, uh, or writing courses for that matter, uh, out there at that, that, that school. But uh, <laughs> if, if Gra there it is, thank you, Rob. Rutgers, Rutgers is the one uh, that, oh, damn it, that, that has claimed that grammar, proper grammar, is racist. So, um, <laughs> you know... <laughs> So uh, they say they're going to incorporate critical grammar into the program. And let's see what the hell critical grammar is. Uh, this was posted on July 24th over at freebeacon.com. Uh, the English department at a public university declared that proper English grammar is racist. Racist! <laughs> Rutgers University English Department will change its standards of English instruction in an effort to stand with and respond to the Marxist Black Lives Matter movement. They want to stand with Marxists. And an, they don't they don't mention Marxists in the in the article here, by the way. Uh, in an email written by Department Chairwoman Rebecca Walkowitz, the graduate writing pe program will emphasize social justice, which I still don't understand what that is, and critical grammar. Walkowitz said that the, the, departmental, the department would respond to recent events and workshops on social justice and writing, increasing focus on graduate student life. On what? <laughs> and incorporating critical grammar into our pedagogy. You mean pedo something else? I, I don't know. Pedagogy. All right. The critical grammar of approach challenges the standard academic form of the English language in favor of a more inclusive writing experience. Now, let me tell you right now. If I start, uh, it's uh, I think there's an A. It's peta peta, p a p e d a g o g y. There you go. Art or profession of teaching. Okay, so pedo petas. All right. All right. If I start to read something, whether it be an article on the internet, a book, what uh, whatever it is, some written stuff. If I start reading it, and they are talking in nonsense language, I'm not going to read it. And it's like, what, what the hell are you talking about? So if you start putting in critical grammar approaches, 
<laughs> you lost me before you got started. I, I'm just not, I mean, unless it's intention to buy like a, a character or something within the writing, if it's a fictional story, um, it, 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 it's, if you start putting nonsense in there, I'm done. I'm finished. I'm not going to read it. Anyway, uh, according to them, the this approach challenges a familiar dogma that writing instruction should limit emphasis on grammar sentence level issues so as not to put students from multilingual, non-standard academic English backgrounds at a disadvantage. Well, you're teaching English. You're teaching English. <laughs> All right, whatever, whatever you want to do, you know. Um, I I don't know where it was, but uh, some long, I don't know how long ago, but a while back now, there was a, a thing that came out, an article, uh, some statement from another fine educational institution uh, that said that math, math was racist. Math. <laughs> Now, I don't know how you get racist math. Uh, I guess uh, that makes much less sense uh, than racist English. Um, but come on. Just quit pandering to the lowest common denominator. Uh, just quit, quit playing these stupid-ass games. You're right. Grammy says it sounds more like lazy, piss-poor teachers wanting to make their own job easier. Of course, if I was a teacher, that would make my job harder because I'd have to read this garbage that people put out and give them a good grade on something that made absolutely no sense. It, it, <laughs> of course, we all remember Common Core, which I think is more or less gone away. I think it's gone away. I hope it's gone away. But the Common Core math, which where if you got the right answer... It didn't matter if you got the right answer because they wanted the wrong answer. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Kate. People would think you'd be abducted <laughs> if you started. <laughs> oh man, let me let me. <laughs> oh oh, this this little bit of nonsense here. Let me share this with you. Because I, I, I don't think it matters to too many people around here, um, because I, I don't think we have a lot of Apple users, uh, Apple laptop users, I should say. But there may, there may be some, or you may know others, peoples, that, that other peoples, peoples, I say, peoples, uh, that that have Apple laptops. But but this this propaganda, and you tell me what you think the real purpose behind it is, because uh, I think it's fairly obvious what the real purpose behind this is, but uh, yeah, you'll have to make that call for yourself. <laughs> I have no brains. The, zi the zombies will get no meal out of me. All right. This is posted on the New York Post back on uh, July 14th. Covering up the camera could damage your laptop. That's a comment from Apple. If you put the the... the, the Electrical tape over your camera so they can't spy on you through your camera. They say, oh, that'll damage your laptop. We'll have to void your warranty if you do that. <laughs> All right, so here it is. Don't cover your camera, Apple has warned MacBook users. It could break your display. Consumers should rely on the green camera indicator uh, light adjacent to their laptop camera. Now, you, most of you probably don't know or don't realize that you, uh, not well, I'm not going to say I, people could hack into your computer and activate your camera without that light and deactivate the little light. But, but Apple says, rely on the green camera indicator light adjacent to your laptop camera. They want you to believe that if that light's not on, your camera's not on. <laughs> Apple told owners of MacBooks, MacBook Airs, and MacBook Pros this month, putting a sticker, post-it note, or other covering in front of the camera itself 
impedes the tightly designed computer's ability to close and could shatter the screen. Uh huh. Sure it could. Uh, one one, ba one MacBook Pro's owner's internal display broke after he applied a webcam cover in April, according to Mac Rumors. If you close your Mac notebook with a camera cover installed, you might damage your display because the clearance between the display and the keyboard is designed to very tight tolerances. Uh huh. <laughs> oh man, I I tell you, they 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 just want they can't spy on you. If you, well, they can still listen through your microphone because there's really no way to shut off the microphone other than going inside of the machine and and disabling it that way. Which I wish they didn't even include microphones on laptops, but they do. Um, th so that's that's really the only way of doing that. And if you still wanted to use the internal one, if you're going inside the machine anyway, you could install a switch, a physical switch, uh, to 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 disable the microphone. Um, you can you can disable it in the hardware settings, but it can still be re-enabled by a properly knowledged hacker. <laughs> so the you know, the only way, way to really uh, to disable the cam uh, the microphone is to to do it by going inside of it, which most people don't want to do. Uh, and I would recommend most of you don't do because uh, taking laptops apart is not easy in the first place. Putting them back together is much more difficult, a much greater degree of difficulty. Getting your uh, uh, your, your your laptops reassembled and still working um, after that. So, <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got in here for you. I love I love I love the Babylon B, but you know that's already funny stuff, so I don't really need to to, to share it with you. Um, okay, here's a story out of Ireland, Ireland. Irish blokes out there. And, and I guess this applies to all of Great Britain and not just Ireland. And this is actually in Scotland, but uh, yeah. At least it was a Scottish man. Okay, Scottish man convicted of calling ex-girlfriend's boyfriend a leprechaun. Oh, well, do not stay away from my gold. Don't show me all shamrocks. <laughs> don't call people leprechauns apparently in 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 great britain anywhere within the borders of great britain says i've been a critic of the alarming this is on uh, blacklisted news by the way i've been a critic of the alarming criminalizing of speech in great britain through hate speech laws such as uh, such laws create an insatiable appetite for greater and greater speech regulation and create a sense of empowerment among citizens to silence those with whom they disagree. Now, a Scottish man has been convicted of a message that was grossly offensive, indecent, or menacing. <laughs> That's right. Stay away from Graham's Lucky Charms. She may be short, but that don't mean she won't hurt you. <laughs> so, so according to the Evening Express, the prosecutor, uh, appropriately, appropriately named Susan Love, cited the fact that Terry Myers, 41, called the o Irish boyfriend of his ex-girlfriend a leprechaun. Oh, you old daddy! Uh, Love declared that that the male was threatening, but added that it was racially aggravated offense due to the word, the use of the word leprechaun. Now, I'm not sure if any of y'all 
have ever actually seen a leprechaun or known anybody that claimed to actually be a leprechaun. And I don't know that the, the leprechauns have any kind of a leprechaun rights group or, or anything along those lines. But I'm going to say they probably don't. <laughs> anyway, his defense attorney said that the two men had a petty and pathetic history and that his client, his client regretted the use of the term. He was nevertheless found guilty and fined $350 for the offense. Well, we have been following uh, the, the worsening situation in England concerning speech, free speech, which, of course, you don't really have free speech in a monarchy, do you? Because you are still a monarchy over there, whether you want to admit it or not. Uh, the, the problem is, trying to draw such lines, rather than embracing free speech as protecting not just popular, but the unpopular and even hateful speech. Once you start as a government to criminalize speech, you end up way, way down that slippery slope of censorship. What constitutes hate speech remains a highly subjective matter, and we have seen... Uh, now, wait a minute. I've seen the movie Leprechaun, and, well, Leprechaun 2 and Leprechaun 3, for that matter. Uh, <laughs> are those movies going to be banned now? Because the, the title of the movie is Leprechaun. Hey, Moose. Hey, Chloe. <laughs> Oh, I didn't even say hi to all the folks. Come on over, jump in the chat, say hi to all the folks over here. We got a great group of folks. At the top of the show, I was singing happy birthday to Grammy and and talking about, you know, changing up the show, doing something different, which I'm going to do, which I'm going to do, uh, which I mentioned a good, very good friend of mine uh, has uh, convinced me to uh, rewire rather than remove. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm going to do that. I may take the next couple weeks off of the show while I think of uh, a better idea, um, a better way to, 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 to program the show, to do the show, rewire my brain to do the show, Moose. Um, not re yeah, so, because I, I wasn't having fun. Revamp. There you go. Uh, whatever word you want to use. But I wasn't having a good time. I just I just wasn't having fun. Uh, do, do it, doing the it's all connected in the way I was doing it and going through all this you know kind of historical stuff and having to go through and and it just wasn't it wasn't working for me so I want to do something I still like to do the show I like doing these shows they're fun uh, in general but but with that with this show I, I wasn't having such a great time so I want to do something and, and I've been suggested and, and more to I guess geared toward me, and we tried this before, Moose, we, with uh, with uh, that one girl from uh, what the hell was her name? Uh, the one girl from 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 that from that website we were on. Um, <laughs> Rearrange the cobwebs. Well, oh, there's a lot of those, baby. Uh, but no, uh, we tried to do the the, the kind of esoteric, uh, paranormal that that kind of stuff, but maybe more than that. Just the weird, weird bullshit news that's out there. Uh, maybe go that way with it, uh, because there is a lot of that, and, uh, and 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 pretty much the news that that comes out um, on an, on an everyday basis. Most of it's just totally crazy, absurd stuff, and and it doesn't have to be necessarily labeled as weird news by anybody other than me. Uh, but <laughs> so so kind of rethinking, re, re, re uh, yeah, do something different. The way of the weird, but it'll still be called. It's all connected because you know, it's all connected. Uh, <laughs> I know that's your favorite Grammy too. This is the weird news. I know you love that stuff. You used to go to the UPI Odd News all the time and some of those other sites. Uh, because because they're so much fun, they're they're so much fun to do. Uh, so um, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm thinking about that, and, and I'll have to consider what I want to do and how I want to do it, and 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 I'll take I'll, you know I'll accept suggestions from people. Anybody wants to throw something at me, um, that that would be great. That would be cool. That'd be fun. Uh, I, I'll, I'll I'll take suggestions from whoever. Um, and, and 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 roll them around inside this 
this big cavern called my head, uh, because, yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> I'm just looking over here at Twitter, and I see this guy asking, you can put one person in office as president of the United States. Choose wisely. And he lists Bernie Sanders and Ron Paul. Well, obviously, if there has to be a president, which I don't want there to be a president, I want all the government to just go away. But if I have to choose between a total socialist and a total libertarian, I'm going to take the libertarian. And, you know, Ron Paul's still a good bit of a statist. But, 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 but he has much better ideas. He actually preaches freedom. Rome's, or trust no one, says 10 years ago he'd have chosen Ron Paul. Today he'd choose Bernie. I choose nobody. Nobody is, is my selection from now until the end of time. Um, I, I, nobody, nobody's looking out for your interest. Nobody will help you. Nobody is great. Nobody is the best choice. So choose nobody. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, nobody 2020. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Donna says she choose the whole, set the whole lot of on fire. <laughs> uh, that's a waste of a good match, though. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, all right. Oh, boy. Hang on, I need a sip of water here. Okay. Absurdity. Absurdity. Now, um, there's there's been some, uh, speaking of elections and who you'd pick and all that wonderful stuff, um, uh, there, there's been some dust up going on over the fact that Trump came out and said that there's no way the USPS, the United States Postal Service, could handle the increased capacity required to do a mail-in ballot, mail-in vote thing. And I tend to agree that they probably can't. I mean, they're, they're not really good with what they get now. Uh, but according to the U.S. Postal Service, they said they definitively, at least according to CNN, which, you know, that's the news you trust, right? Anyway, uh, CNN, uh, the Postal Service said uh, definitively that it can has the capacity to handle the added volume of mail-in ballots in November's general election. Of course, the, the new, and I think we talked about this on Freakers, that the new Postmaster General, a big contributor to the Trump campaign, said that he was going to be cutting back all the hours uh, of the Postal Service, uh, cutting their days way down, getting rid of overtime, and doing other uh, things like that. So um, I, I don't even know what to say about that whole post office thing. The post office should not even exist, not as it does. It, 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 Lysander Spooner, some of you may be aware, um, had a great idea for a competing postal service, and his service would have been awesome. And if we actually had a competing postal service, you wouldn't be throwing all the millions of dollars that are thrown at the USPS every year. Um, and for for a, an organization that big that handles that much traffic, uh, mail traffic, uh, to not be able to actually turn a profit every time, there's something messed up about them. There's something wrong with them. Uh, are they paying their people too much? Oh, yeah, Lysander had it, had it all drawn out, and he was shut down hard by the government. Um, for everybody to use, yes, for everybody to use. Uh, Chloe, he, he uh, well, of course for him to turn a profit. <laughs> you don't start a business without the idea of turning a profit. Uh, but, again, there's no, the, the Postal Service, it's just, it's messed up that they can't turn a profit, uh, being what they do and how long they've been doing it. And it, it, so th there's some insanity going on. So if you go back, just just uh, go and duck, duck, go, uh, Lysander Spooner Postal Service. 
Now you'll you'll see you'll see uh, you'll see all about it. Uh, I think there's also also um, an article on Real Liberty Media about it. So uh, yeah, the USPS used to make money. Now they don't. What happened? What happened? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So the the U.S. government subsidized bubble wrap? Well, learn something new every day. I, I don't know if that's true. It's just a tweet. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. See, absurd. Trump says TikTok sale can go through, but only if the United States gets a cut. Did what? <laughs> well, yeah, UPS and FedEx are great for packages, not so much for tiny little things like mail. They don't do the mail very well. So, um, <laughs> oh, TikTok. You see, that's something. I mean, th this has been a thing lately. I never even heard of it until recently, a couple months ago. First time I ever heard of TikTok. Now it's become this big thing. And it's just like, who cares? It's some stupid video thing that kids use on the Internet. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, this is from last week. Let me tell you about this. Not that this matters to anybody outside of New Mexico. And I don't even know if it's still going on. It's probably done with by now. I haven't heard anything more about it. Of course, they don't like covering these kind of stories on the local news stations, local radio stations, uh, because, well, they're all pro-government, pro and so they don't, they don't like this kind of stuff being reported on their news. But I haven't heard anything about it since last Thursday or so. Uh, yeah, let's see what was the 26th. Uh, I guess last Monday was when I heard about it. All right, so a week ago. Uh, but anyway, there was a protest up at the Roundhouse, which is the uh, Congress, the, the state Congress building here, um, uh, calling for the governor's removal. Not a protest by the, the, the Congress people, Congress critters, but by protesters uh, that said they would not leave the Roundhouse until the governor was removed from office. Uh, the protest was organized by the group I Will Not Comply New Mexico. Uh, they say that... Uh, the governor, the crazy governor Grisham, has violated the New Mexican's constitutional rights, and she absolutely freaking lutely has. Uh, the group said they have no other option but to lock the doors. They placed uh, chains uh, with with locks around the handles of the doors. Now I don't know how many doors that how, that building has or not, or uh, if that's what they actually did. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, there's that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, let's see. It has nothing to do with Republican or Democrat. It doesn't have to do with Corona. It doesn't have to do with masks. This is about the Constitution of the United States, and we have a governor that has violated her oath of office. We have no recourse in this state. So I'm staying here until the Department of Justice and AG Barr gets involved, said the protest attendee, Stephen Garrett, a small business owner in Moriarty. <laughs> I don't know who Stephen Garrett is or what business he runs here in my town, uh, but uh, and, I, and again, I don't know. They say when they said they were going to uh, secure water, porta potties, generators, and other items essential for their indefinite stay. Uh, but again, I'm not sure if they're even still there. I haven't heard anything on the the, the local news places about this or not uh, since uh, since then. So. Um, Hooray for them! Hooray for them! <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing about the USPS, and, and, and they've been a big joke for a long time because they lose a lot of mail, they take a long time in many cases. Sometimes they're really great. I mean, I've had some really good experiences with USPS, as far as getting uh, stuff to, to people I send it to or uh, stuff from people sending to me. Uh, you know, if you use priority mail, it costs a bit more. 
but 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 you got tracking and it gets there and and it's only recently they that that they allowed you know started tracking allowing for tracking so there's been some pretty good first class mail i don't you know you're you're not paying well you're paying a lot more than you did when i was a kid which i think it was like 13 cents for a stamp and now it's well i don't know what is it now 55 cents something like that either way like four times the price um uh, of of what it was when i was a kid uh and and uh, the service is no better that's for sure um so and yeah i like the people at my post office here it's always well not always the same people they get they get certain people that rotate in and out but there's a core group that's been there since i moved here um and and and, and i get you know they're all fine they're they're good folk um i i don't like the fact that i have to pay for a, a post office box um, which technically I don't, I, I could, I could challenge that. Uh, but being the fact that I have this oversized mailbox, I wouldn't get that for free. I'd have to get one of the little tiny ones uh, for free. Um, and they don't have home delivery of, of mail here in, in my town, which I was shocked by when I moved here. Actually, I, I was, I was shocked that there was no home delivery of mail. Uh, I, I didn't realize that. Did my prices go up on my mail? I don't know. I don't buy stamps. <laughs> the, the, the only stuff I've been mailing uh, as of recent uh, through USPS was packages for stuff I sold on eBay. And eBay has a deal. It's all built in there. And they give you, like, discounts on all your mailing and stuff like that uh, when you purchase. Oh, on the P.O. Box. Last year, I think it went up. The P.O. Box, I think, went up last year. I think it went up from 100 to 110, because um, uh, like I said, I got the big box, the oversized uh, mega box, um, and, and so I, I didn't go up this year, but it did go up last year, um, which I, I, I wasn't. I mean, I, I forget what it was when I first got it, but it, but uh, it, it's never been cheap. <laughs> but anyway, whatever. All right, all right, that's enough stuff. Anyway, so. Um, Plan on me not being here next Monday evening. Um, I, I, I might be, but, but just plan on me not being here uh, on next Monday uh, and, and possibly the Monday after. Um, while, I, while I try and think of what I want to do, what direction I want to go, I do like the idea of, of just doing weird stories um, and, and stuff that is maybe a normal story that I find weird, which is not hard to do. Almost every serious news story I come across, I laugh at. Thanks, Kate, and have a nice walk. Um, <laughs> so so uh, if you've got ideas, you know, you can PM them to me or email them to me, liberty at reallibertymedia.com, um, and, 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 uh, and just put something in the headline, a uh, possible new concept for your show, and uh, that'll be cool. Um, however, however it needs to be done or you want to do it, That'd be great. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, oh, tomorrow is uh, in a perfect world uh, there with uh, with Grammy and Flash. Well, are you going to be there, Grammy, tomorrow? I think she said she was. Uh, I don't know if it's brain food. It might be some of that brain fungus. It might turn you into a sex-crazed zombie cicada woman. <laughs> Anyway, check the schedule on, on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz for all the shows. Oh, by the way, and I didn't mention this. Oh, uh, Hal, Hal's, Hal's uh, video posted on YouTube yesterday, which is just a rebroadcast, uh, a podcast of his, of his Sunday show. YouTube pulled it down because he was not agreeing with the World Health Organization. <laughs> that's all right we got bit shoot we got bit shoot we got spreaker uh we got rlm uh we, we got all kinds of other places you can listen to that so hooray for hal red that's a nice badge there a badge of honor getting pulled off the freaking youtubes anyway y'all have a great night we'll talk to you soon uh, peace